Welcome, governors. Hey, this is Adishi here, and this is part four in my series on troop types. And in this video, we're going to break down archers. But before I get into it, I just want to give a special shout out to Darth Ariso, the mighty cat himself, who really helped me break this down, put it in perspective, and give me some insight and testing to go along with this uh, to really make this video exceptional. All right, so let's get to it. So just like with the previous videos, what we're going to do is a chronological view, starting with the beginning Archer Commanders and going through the newest Commanders that have been released into the game. And also we're going to take a look at Talents. Now the reason we look at Talents is because it allows us to get into the heads of Lilith and see what was Lilith really intending when they built out the Archer Commanders. So to start that off, there's really three unique abilities in the archer tree that I think are worth looking at. The first is going to be Venomous Sting. It increases active skill damage from the primary and secondary commanders of up to 8%. Note the wording on that active skill damage. The second one is Phoenix Tail Arrows. This is an RNG ability or basically a random chance to do something. This is 10% to proc an additional attack, uh, damage factor 200. That's quite substantial. And the third ability is Whistling Arrows. This has an also an RNG or 10% chance to proc. It increases all damage dealt by 25% for the next two seconds. So if we look at this, what do we see is increased skill damage. Okay, or I'm sorry, active skill damage. Chance to proc to do additional skill damage. And then chance to proc to in increase or elevate your own damage. Okay. Well, the first thing we know is they're going to do lots of skill damage. All right, so let's take a look at the commanders. So the first commander we're going to look at is going to be El Cid. Now, El Cid's first ability is a thousand damage factor. Pretty modest for a legendary commander, but he also disables active skills and normal attacks for one second. That's quite substantial if you think that if normal attack is your primary function or primary way of dealing damage, this is quite impactful. Now his second ability is going to, it's a 10% chance to do additional damage factor of a, a thousand, which is quite substantial. And this kind of goes in with a theme of kind of that RNG or chance to proc additional damage. His third ability is just some movement speed and defense. Nice to have. His fourth ability, though, whenever you see something that says below 50%, just keep in mind that works exceptionally well in rallies and garrisons. I don't want to get into exactly why, but for the purpose of this video, this skill is quite effective in rallies and garrisons. Okay? Now, his final ability is you get some stats, which are nice, but then he does 2% additional damage to infantry. That is a very specific use case. But if you're fighting infantry, 2% extra damage is nice to have. All right, let's take a look at the second commander. This is gonna be YSG. Now, YSG is all around just a phenomenal uh, uh, champion in the game, regardless of what troop type you have, but specifically if you're an archer uh, troop type. So his first ability is a big AOE that does big damage. Okay, nothing fancy there. His second ability is another RNG type style, but this increases rage and gives you increased archer attack bonus for three seconds. Now, what's worth noting is when you increase your rage, you also increase the chance that you're going to use an active skill sooner, right? If you're sitting on 800 rage, you increase it by 900, now the next turn, you're going to hit a thousand. So there's a better chance that you're going to actually proc your active skill within the time frame of this 100% in increased archer attack. I just wanted to note that the combination of that synergizes better than maybe what you kind of see when you first look at this ability. Now, his third ability is he is a garrison commander, so it makes him better at garrisoning his own city. Fourth ability is increased skill damage, not increased active skill damage. Now, when I say active skill damage, it says active skill, but increases all skill damage by 50%. That is a lot. Okay, 
Let's look at his expertise. Now, this is what makes YSG so unique and so versatile, is this changes his AOE to be 360, or anything near you is going to get hit up to a max of five targets. Until Theo was released, this was the only commander in the game that could do this. So if we kind of take stock of where we're at, uh, we're going to do lots of skill damage, and we're going to have lots of RNG-style attacks. Okay, El Cid does that, YSG does that. The one thing that's interesting to note is they both have very unique abilities. El Cid has this disable, he has this damaged infantry increase, and then YSG has this 360 AoE, which in specific use cases is really good, but not necessarily improving in all situations, if that makes any sense. So let's look at the second set of commanders. They're going to be Eddie and Tamarius. So what Eddie does is direct damage factor of 2,500, the biggest direct damage factor of any commander in the game to date. Now, the downside of this is his rage requirement is 1,350. The normal rage requirement is generally 1,000. So by comparison, He's going to use this less often, but when he does use it, it's going to do really big damage. Okay, his second ability is increased march speed, increased health. He's an archer commander, that makes sense. Now his third ability, once again, increased skill damage by 25% and 5% increased damage to infantry. Once again, increased skill damage, which we've seen as a common theme, and once again, increased damage to infantry, which is a very specific use case. Now his fourth ability is really interesting because it increases his attack at the expense of defense by 40%, which is substantial, but only if you have over 70% of units remaining. Meaning in a rally or garrison situation, this is gonna be less effective because you're going to get under that threshold quicker. Now in the open field, this is actually a pretty effective ability, and that's just worth noting. Now his last ability is increases normal and counterattack damage by 50%. We haven't seen anything like this to this uh, point, but I do want to note that there's a little anti-synergy with here because he's using his skills less often, so this is going to go off less than if you were to have a different commander that has a thousand rage requirement. So let's take a look at the next commander, and this is going to be Tamarius. Now, Tamarius is also a very unique champion. She applies stacks of poison, and then when she uses her active ability, she does uh, skill damage and then does additional damage depending on how many stacks of poison. More stacks, the more damage, and there's a threshold of if there's more than 10 stacks, then that damage factor is actually multiplied by a much bigger factor. So her second ability is just increase archer attack when you're attacking cities. Good to have. She's a conquering commander, which is worth noting. Uh, next ability is increase archer attack. And now you have a RNG type ability, but this one decreases the target's defense for three seconds of up to 30%. That is quite substantial. And this is her poison. So she has a 100% probability at the end, so basically every normal attack or every turn, you're going to a step, apply a stack of poison, and it increases the skill damage the target takes by 3% per stack for a total of 45% after 15 seconds. And of course, her active ability will clear those out and then turn them into direct damage. The expertise Increases uh, attack by 10%, increases counterattack damage by 10%, which is nice. But then it reduces the attack of cavalry units that are attacking this commander by 10%. 10% reduction in attack for an expertise with a bunch of other stuff added in is actually really good, but the use case on that is very limited because it has to be cavalry. But once again, worth noting. So let's take stock real quick. What do we have in these commanders? lots of skill damage. On top of that, we have lots of skill damage. And then you have really unique scenarios in which you have abilities that are really good if something else is happening. 
Okay, let's take a look at the next commanders and see if we can kind of piece together exactly what they're trying to do. Now, this is going to be Ramses and Artemisia, the Season 3 uh, Archer Commanders. So Ramses does additional damage factor of 800 and then reduces their defense. So how this works is you use your active skill, active skill, you reduce their defense, and then over the next two seconds, you deal 800 per tick for a total of 1600 uh, skill damage, which is substantial. And also note, he synergizes with himself in the defense reduction. The second ability is just increase attack, nice to have. Third ability is reduce skill damage taken. Okay, that's nice. And then you have a 10% chance or an RNG type ability to increase attack and march speed by a substantial amount of 40% for three seconds. But note, this is actually anti-swarm technology because it's not when you attack, as we've seen in other abilities, but when you are attacked. So if you have multiple people attacking you, chances are you're always going to have 40% attack bonus and march speed. Fourth ability is some sustain, which is nice, and a defense bonus. And this one is an RNG type uh, style, but it's for your normal attacks. So it isn't that anti-swarm technology that we've seen in the previous ability. And his expertise increases his damage factor to 1,000, which is nice for a total of 2,000. That's very substantial. Defense by 30%. And then you have this. It's a heal immune effect. Now we have seen other commanders that necessarily reduce healing taken, but we have never seen a commander that just says you can't heal, period. Very specific use case, but very powerful. Now let's look at Artemisia. Artemisia has a direct damage factor of 1800. In an AOE, just note that no other AOE in the game does this kind of direct damage factor. And she doesn't have a 15% reduced damage for additional targets. Now, if we look at other AOE commanders, and I won't go in too much detail, but all legendary commanders have this. Damage dealt to each target is reduced by 15% for each additional target. Artemisia doesn't have that, which means her AOE, if she hits multiple targets, is just devastating. It's the biggest AOE in the game. Now, the downside of that is she hurts herself. Just worth noting that she does uh, slightly wounded only, and that's in the new patch notes. So when she hurts herself, she will never cause severely wounded. All right, her second ability is just stats. Nice to have. Her third ability, she is a garrison commander, so it's worth noting that she's better in the garrison. And she reduces normal, attacks, normal attack damage by 10% and she has a 10% chance to disarm the target for one second. Now, disarm prevents the target from doing normal attacks. So every time you attack her, there's a 10% chance that the next turn, you cannot attack her. Now, once again, very limited use case, because if what you're doing and what your primary damage source is normal attacks, or if normal attacks is what drives your damage source, which we kind of see with archers, right? And all those kind of RNG style abilities. This is very, very effective. Now her fourth ability is kind of strange. When she gets to 80% rage, she silences herself. Now what does silence do? It prevents you from using active skills. So she silences herself for three seconds, but then for five seconds, she has 50% increased damage. So how that works, Round one, your silence, two, your silence, three, your silence. Round four, you use your active skill with 50% increased damage. And then turn five, you just do your uh, normal damage, but at a 50% increase. Now her final ability is normal attacks have a 10% chance. So once again, RNG of doing some nice damage factor, but then your target does increase skill damage for three seconds. So this ability is actually really good, a 10% chance to do a 400 damage factor on an expertise. But on the flip side, if your target is doing skill damage back at you, that can really hurt. So once again, a very powerful ability with a very limited use case in which it's effective. Okay, so if we take a look at all of the archer commanders to where we're at, 
there's definitely a common theme of increasing skill damage. You're going to do massive skill damage with archers. Archers have the best AoE in the game with both Artemisia and YSG and his circular AoE. You also have several commanders that are boosting skill damage passively. You have these RNG procs that can boost yourself, boost your damage, cause additional damage. All of that's really nice. But at this point, what are archers really doing, right? They're doing a lot of damage and all those kind of cool procs. Well, when you start to look deeper, you start to see that archers just have a bunch of random stuff. And when you kind of look at it individually, it almost looks like Lilith just a yeah, let's pick some cool things and give it to them. But then when you kind of sit back and look at the big picture, what Lilith is telling us, and I'm going on a little bit of limb here, this is just my theory, is Lilith is telling us archers are really good in X situation. Now fill in X. Each commander is going to be a little different. You can say archers are really good rallies if X. Archers are really good garrison if X. Archers are phenomenal in the open field if X. Now, in order to use those abilities and maximize that, you have to know what that X is before you engage in that fight. And I think this is what archer commanders do. I think if you are a type of player who likes to really analyze, likes to tweak, dig into the battle logs, figure out what works, what doesn't work, put in the time and effort to really understand, I think the threshold on how good archer commanders are is actually exceptionally high. In other games, I would call this a skill cap. And what I mean by that is there are some commanders that just kind of have a low skill cap in that you don't really need to know what you're doing. You just run around, hit things, you'll do good damage, you'll have good reports. To be honest, a character or a champion like Alex does that. Hit things, do damage. Now, archers, on the other hand, can do more, but you have to have a very high understanding of what you're doing, what you're trying to achieve, and what the battlefield is going to look like before you get there. So if that's a play style that you really enjoy, then I would recommend Archer Commanders. But if you are the type of player that just kind of kind of goes in, kind of what they would say YOLO, right? That's what the kids all say now. Then archers are probably not going to be for you. If you just say YOLO and run into the runes with archers, you're going to lose a lot of troops. Now you can do that with cav, and if things go bad, just run away. You can do that with infantry, and if things go bad, you just stand and fight, and yeah, you get some decent trades out of it. But archers, you're just going to get wrecked. Now on the flip side, if you can piece it together, find exactly what you're trying to achieve, archers are very, very precise in those use cases and can wreck. So I hope this made a little bit of sense to you guys. It really took me a long time to piece together. I didn't see this, and it's not very apparent until you really try to pull it apart. But then once you do, it starts to make a ton of sense. And the one thing I will say in addition is think about this. Infantry are the best garrison, but there's not a lot of good rallies. Cav are the best rallies, but there's actually no garrison options. Archers, though, have both rally and garrison, but they're only good in certain situations. But anyways, to wrap this up, uh, thank you for watching this video. This is going to conclude the uh, troop type series, but if you like this video, he please hit like and share it with your alliance mates, and then subscribe to see what series we're going to do in the future. Also, if you want to leave uh, comments down below with maybe some suggestions of things you would like to see in the future, uh, please do that, and that'll give me some direction to work with in the future. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you again for all the support uh, over the last few weeks, and you guys have a good night.